everybody, it's Oliver here from Blendus.com. This time I'll explain you how to use the modifiers in Blender 2.5. I have here a cube and I'm going now to, to apply a, a few modifiers to it so you can see how they work. So here I'm on the properties panel in the modifiers tab. Okay? So here, clicking here, you will add a modifier. You got three groups of modifiers generate, deform and simulate uh, well this time I'm going to explain just a few of this group and the rest are up to you to explore okay so for example uh, subdivision surface now uh, there are several parameters here that add uh, properties of this uh, modifier for example here this number of subdivision on the viewport and in the render okay here is the subdivision type okay but uh, these uh, options here are pretty interesting okay this is uh, well let me make this okay this is the name of the modifier okay we can change it for uh, smooth for example or subsurf01 now this uh, shows or hide the modifiers effect on the render the eye here makes the same but on the viewport and this show or hide the modifier during the edit mode so if we change to the edit mode we will see the actual object for modifying it and the effect of the modifier after it's applied. Now we can use even this option here to show the modifier while, while editing. Okay, So we can see the vertices on the position that they will be after applying that modifier. So this is very useful. Well I created a few scenes here uh, using some modifiers so you can see them okay uh, at this point I have here an array modifier applied to this object well the array modifiers uh, duplicates an object as many times as we want depending on a few parameters that we have here okay so I created uh, four modifiers for array modifiers for this object and uh, I'll show you uh, how to use them because uh, the order in which you apply the modifiers really matters uh, when they take effect okay so uh, if we uh, put an, a modifier and we put another one over it it will affect the object in a different way that we have this one right here I'm going to show you this thing so I activate this modifier and this is what this, it does okay now the second one duplicates it on the other side but as you can see what the second uh, array has done is duplicate the first array effect okay so uh, well also uh, in the second one I, I use this feature here which is the start and the end cap okay I created this object here and I called it cap and as you can see if we use it, it will apply one at the start of the array and another one at the end. Now, if we change the order of these modifiers, you will see what happens. Okay? It's a really slight um, difference, but you have seen what happens. Now, the first modifier duplicates the object from for the side and the, f the second one do it on the height but the second one now is using the cap here the first one sorry okay but let's take it like it was now the third modifier here duplicates again the first and the second modifier effect to the side we can change here the parameters for example so we change the distance in which is duplicated 
just in another axis like this okay and if we change the order again we can change it with these arrows here you see what happens okay so uh, if you apply an object first uh, a modifier first and another modifier after it, it the, the second one will affect the first one effect okay so be careful with this uh, overall when you apply for example an armature modifier if you have a subsurface on the character if it's a character uh, well the armature uh, it's useful for the form uh, an object with the skeletons so if you have a subdivision surface applied to an to an object that you will deform with that modifier uh, the subsurface should be after the armature modifier because uh, if you have the subsurface first the armature will have to deform a lot of vertices but if you if you have the subsurface first the, sus uh, the armature first sorry the armature will have to deform just a few vertices and then after that deformation Blender is going to subdivide it with the subsurf modifier okay so be very careful with the order of the modifiers you can apply them on the order that you want but then be sure to uh, arrange them okay so they fit your needs uh, now um, let me like this one here as you can see you can combine a few arrays to make some cool things but I changed something here let me arrange this one two here well it's the same I think you you catch the idea of the array modifier now there is another very cool way to use the array modifier and it's using an object to tell blender how to make the array okay how to offset the duplicate of the object uh, what we have to do is just to uh, activate here object offset and select an object to make the effect okay in this case is this empty so we have here okay count 10 this is the number of times the array will duplicate that object so if we select this and we move them we move it you can see that it affects the way in the that the objects are duplicated we can even rotate it and scale it so this is pretty cool and of course we can animate all this the parameters and all that stuff so we can do some cool very cool abstract uh, videos with this modifier it's actually <laughs> there are actually a lot of videos using this effect if you take a look at YouTube so uh, let's change the count so you can see what happens Okay. And now I have here another array modifiers. As you can see the difference. Okay. But I'm going to make some kind of strange thing here. Like this, scaling it and rotating it this way. And now rotating it this way. increase a bit the count and move it also in the back so as you can see they are some kind of tentacles and well this is an example that you can apply with the array modifier if you want to know more about this modifier, you can check uh, a recent Andrew Price from Blender Guru tutorial uh, in which he managed to 
apply an array modifier, well, a few array modifiers, to construct an entire building. Okay, so it's very interesting. Be sure to check it. Now, another modifier, the bevel modifier. Well, this is what it does. Okay, we have this object here, and these bevels, the edges. Okay, we can change it, the value here. Uh, there is actually no way. Well, it, I think it is possible using an atom, but uh, for now, natively, it's not uh, possible to uh, change the uh, amount of bevel you have on different edges. Okay, there is a feature named called uh, bevel weight, but it's not possible to adjust it for now. Okay, so I have here another bevel modifier that it will bevel the edges created for by the first modifier as you can see here okay now boolean this is a very interesting uh, modifier we apply the modifier here and now as you can see if we move this sphere it will cut parts of the second of the object that has the modifier okay but we can do another things with this this union for example will create a mesh that uh, takes the first mesh and the second mesh into just one okay without the intersections and another is the difference no sorry the intersect it will take just the part that intersect with the second object okay so this is a, a pretty cool modifier but you have to use it with careful because um, well it creates a lot of faces and it's a bit slow so be careful but it's also an imitable and all that stuff so very cool build okay this is a very cool modifier what the build does is just uh, build an object okay if you apply this uh, modifier to an object you can see here that if you press play it will be creating the faces over the time to build that object it's very useful for disintegration effects and all that okay we can uh, change here the the number of frames it takes to to build okay here we can randomize the effect when the effect start okay so it's very cool now decimate well, I have here a character I created for a short movie some time ago, and what Decimate does is, well, I have uh, this mesh here, as you can see, it's a very heavy mesh, okay? In the short movie, I had a subsurface modifier, but for this example, I applied that modifier, so it has a lot of phases. Okay, so here, decreasing the ratio, you can see here that it has uh, at this moment uh, this number of phases but if we decrease this ratio here it will well it's not applied let me here it's taking a bit of time well let's start again It's going a bit slow right now. Well, here with one, we have the entire phase count. But if we decrease this number to the half, for example, it will get the half of phases. But as you can see, it will triangulate the mesh. But we will have. Uh, a lot less faces okay 0 0.1 we will have just the tenth part okay 
So as you can see, it has a lot uh, less faces than the, or than the original one, the original mesh. Okay, this is uh, pretty useful when you have an object that will uh, appear very far away from the camera because uh, you have uh, a lot less faces to render so the render times uh, will be faster of course now the mask modifier well I created here a few vertex groups well just one <laughs> mask vertex group okay, I selected uh, this face, this faces here, and I created a vertex group from these vertices. Okay, so if we go again to the modifiers tab, and we activate the mask, we see what happens. Okay, we select here vertex group, we select the vertex group, and now it will uh, hide the rest of the mesh. We can invert the effect, so we will hide that vertex group. Okay, this is useful uh, when using, uh, for example, this character here. When animating it, uh, the tail, uh, well, is a secondary element, so I have to animate the the first, the basic character first, and the tail was. Uh, well, giving me some headaches. So I applied a mask effect to that, to this tail, and I had it hidden uh, before. Well, while I was animating the rest of the character, and then when I had the character animated, I show the tail, so I can animate it. Okay, it's very useful. Now the mirror. Well, it's. It's useful for characters, for symmetric characters or or things. Okay, I have here this vertex here that is not needed. Okay, eliminate it. And I will apply the mirror modifier here. As you can see, it will duplicate, will reflect the the main object to the other side. Okay, we can change here the axis in which is reflected. Or we can take here an object uh, to act as a center for that reflection. Okay, by default it takes the center of the object. Now uh, there is a very cool feature here, which is the clipping. Okay, if we deactivate the clipping and move an object that is in the center on the symmetry line, it will be separated. But if we activate clipping, let me separate it first. If we activate the clipping and move it to the symmetry line, it will be uh, some kind of sticky to that line. Okay, so it's very useful for modeling without passing to the other side. Okay, very cool. I'm going to show you here another case of applying the the order of the modifiers. We can add here a subserve, modi subserve modifier, okay? But if we add it before, you can see here that we get this line, okay? You can see the difference right now. And it's be because it will, uh, if we apply the subserve first, it will just make the subsurface. Uh, to this side and then duplicate this side, uh, di reflect all this uh, mesh. But if we apply the mirror first, it will subsurface, it will smooth, taking care of the, of the other side. So the symmetry line will be better smoothed. Okay, you can see the change. Now another one, for example, is the, let me take a look, screw modifier. This is a very cool one and it's, uh, it's a modifier from this version of Blender. Okay, I have a curve here, you can use a uh, normal object or meshes, but I, I use the curve and as you can see, I'm activating it and with this dash is 
make some kind of revolution effect. Okay. I changed the angle here. If I put here 360, we have a base. Okay. We also can go here and change the curve and it will affect the final screwed object. Now, here we have the steps. Okay, so when more steps, more uh, defined shape. And now the screw. Okay, we can adhere. Very cool. So if we put it here and now we increase the angle like this, increase this value here. You see that it takes an interesting effect. Now we can apply another modifier over this one. For example, simple deform and here bend. Okay, factor. Well, it's not working as as expected but taper okay you can deform it or stretch okay you can do interesting things with it what else uh, wave well the wave is an interesting modifier as you can see and we can change here a lot of uh, a lot of values so let me take for example uh, speed okay so it's okay, the height white So it's very cool, as you can see. You can uh, combine a lot of modifiers to achieve the effect that you need. And again, if you change the order of the modifiers, you see that there is a difference on the effect. And the height <laughs> well it's, it's enough <laughs> solidify modifier is a very interesting one it's new on the blender 2.5 also and what it does is give thickness to an object okay so I have here the thickness value okay as you can see it gives some thickness to it. Now there is uh, an interesting thing which is the offset. Okay, If you change the offset to less 1 to minus 1 it will affect just uh, to the inside part of the object and with one offset uh, you will take effect in the outside part of the object. Uh, when it's in, on zero it will apply the thickness to the, to the both sides as you can see here okay I'm going to apply it just to the outside as you can see right now okay but at this point you can put a negative value here for changing the thickness to the inside part so this is a very cool uh, modifier I use it a lot for example to uh, give thickness to walls or I don't know uh, a cloth if you have a cloth a simulated cloth is just a plane without thickness but if you add then a solidify modifier and then a subsurface modifier it will have some uh, very cool thickness okay so well the rest of the modifiers is up to you to explore and uh, well maybe we can see another one on 
next tutorials about simulation or particles and that stuff but it's all for now so uh, take care and happy blending